am I audible to everyone? Right. Good evening. So you had an IR session as well. Right. How many IR questions were there? Four. Right. So how much time should I take? 15 minutes, 20 minutes since it is art and culture. Should I take less? Right. I'll try to do justice to the three questions which were part of your GS1 paper. How many of you have attempted GS1 paper in its totality? All 20 questions? No one? Right. Coming to this point over here. Okay. There were three questions. And what was the difficulty level of these three questions? Was it easy, medium, difficult compared to the last few years? Tell me. Easy. Moderate to difficult. What was it exactly? Okay. Let's do one thing. Let's forget about all these three questions for the time being. There is this one saying, a thing of beauty. Is a? Uh, this, what, this one all you will know. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Very good. What does this mean? What does this mean? A thing of beauty is a joy forever. When I talk about art and culture as such, one of the main advices that you will get from your seniors is art and culture, you will get only two questions in your mains. So don't prepare for it. And if there was any person who went with such an advice, they would have lost out on answering three questions in such a way where they could have got as many good marks as possible. Considering that this year, the questions were of just medium difficulty level. Right? That's one thing. The reason why art and culture is often neglected by people is they forget to appreciate the beauty of that particular subject. They forget to realize that joy in that subject, art and culture. How many of you have been to temples? Yes. What kind of temples? The normal Hindu temples. What else is there? There are Jain temples. There are Buddhist temples as well. Is it not? Very good. Architecture. Here they have not asked about architecture, right? We'll come to the sculpture. So when you visit temples in general, you will see certain carvings on the temple walls. You will see carvings on the pillars of the temples. The artist who did that work, did he do it just for fun's sake? One day he woke up and he said that I want to do something extraordinarily difficult. So he took some stones and all those things and he started carving. Or was there any logic behind him carving those things, any importance or significance of it. Obviously there was, right? So what the first question in your art and culture paper is asking is the significance of medieval Indian sculpture and how you can reconstruct the social life of those times. It's as simple as that. When you visit temples in the present scenario, when you look at the carvings, the sculptural things, what all do you learn from it? What aspects do you learn from it? In some of the carvings, you might come across a particular event in Ramayana and Mahabharata being depicted. Right? Is it not? So when you look at that sculptural carving, you can perceive that we are living in a time where mythology such as Ramayana and Mahabharata is still an integral part of our life. You guys agree with me? Right? That is one part of our social life. Right? Social life, religion is an important constituent. Right? That is one thing. So when you look at this question, I will give you some more examples, not to worry. Whenever you look at an art and culture question, na, there are certain things, paradigms that you need to remember while framing an introduction. How will you explain that medieval Indian temple architecture represent the social life of those times. Here are two things that you need to understand. Medieval time period. When does medieval time period exactly start? When does medieval time period exactly start? Some say it is with the fall of the Gupta Empire. Some say it is with the fall of Pushya Bhuti dynasty, Ashwavardhana. You remember that, right? Ashwavardhana's dynasty was called as the last great dynasty 
of the ancient period. From that time period till the advent of the Mughals, that is what is called as medieval period. From that point onwards, it's called as a modern India or a early modern like that. Coming back to this, that is one thing that you need to keep in mind. Social life, I told you, when I talk about our social life, religion is an important aspect of India society. You guys agree with me? What we wear, the clothing style. When you visit a temple, when you see a Shila Balaki, all of you are Kannadigas? Yes, Shila Balaki. Who is Shila Balaki? Don't give me any heroine's name. Shila Balaki. It is Shalabanjikas or Mandakinis, dancing figurines. When you look at these Shila Balakis, the clothing style appeals to you. Apart from that, you see so many ornaments, right? And Indians, since times immemorial, have always been obsessed with gold, is it not? That is also an integral part of our social life. Clothing habits, lifestyle. Now, when you want to be entertained, when you want to read something, you open YouTube, all right? You open your textbooks. But remember, all these medieval Indian temples, they did not have such kind of technology. Temples served as education centers as well. You guys agree with me? So when you go to a temple, when you look at the sculpture, you need to be able to get some education out of it. Were there any sculptures who gave you that education? Ramayana and Mahabharata were related to ethical education. Right? Apart from that, anything else? How many of you have visited Hampi? Yes. In Hampi, have you observed this cultural carvings or is it just going there for an Instagram photo? Even unknowingly, we do those things these days, right? Yes, coming back. In this Vijayanagara temples, you have sculptural panels. Vitala temple, Hazara Rama temple, where apart from talking about Ramayana and Mahabharata, they have showcased the trading which was happening in Vijayanagara empire's time. And Vijayanagara empire, was it a very rich empire or a very poor empire as such? Very rich. They have showcased that trade happening on these cultural panels. How many of you are from rural parts of our country? Right. In rural areas, be it in North India or in South India, you always have a festival that happens on an annual basis. When I visited one of the temples in Hampi, there there was a sculptural panel where a local festival depiction was being showcased. Alright? And in that local festival depiction, there is music, there is dance, and even foreigners are watching it. So during the medieval times, you have read your ancient medieval history, right? Who were the foreigners who visited Vijayanagara times? You remember? So we are all out of that prelims mindset, so please don't ask us. Abdul Razak, right? Domingo Pace, right? So that's the thing. Social life of those times. Anyone of you who has visited the Chola temples? Chola temples, anyone of you? Right? Where are Chola temples predominantly? Tamil Nadu. Very good. Chola rulers, they worshipped which god? Shiva or Vishnu? Shiva. But when you look at some of the Chola temples, they have both Shiva as well as Vishnu depictions, sculptural depictions. So what does this tell you about the social life of that particular time period? Were they fighting or were the, were there is unity at that point in time? Unity was there, right? So art and culture, if you perceive it in this way where you can find some sense of beauty, right? There will be some sense of joy for you on a personal level. And more importantly, you will be able to score good amount of marks, right? So that's the thing. Whatever you do, it's not just art and culture. Whichever subject you take, realize that beauty of that subject and eventually you will get good marks. Very good. Now Vijayanagara Empire the temples that you have studied about, there they gave emphasis to something called as Amman goodies or Amman shrines. These were shrines which were dedicated explicitly to who? To the goddesses, the concert of the gods. What does this tell you about the social life? What it might tell you? Tell me. 
what it might tell you it might tell that there was an increasing all right emphasis on gender equality in this way at least right so go on like this social life of those times religion education gender clothing lifestyle have okay just a second I've given some images. Let me just find the way to scroll down. Can you please help me to scroll down? Yeah. Just a second. Here, when we talk about Chola Empire, na, which culture comes to your mind? Chola Empires. Here I have given one sculpture. Can you recall this? Can you tell me which sculpture this is? Nataraja, right? So when you look at Nataraja, this Nataraja or the dancing Shiva, what message are they trying to give to the people who watch it? What message, Nataraja? You have to lead a life in such a way where you are not getting attracted to the Maya ignorance, illusion, right? So if I'm saying religion, you need to give a justification like that and an example, okay? Just making mere arguments will not be enough. Bartila, just a second. Right. This one is it. It's not, it's not working that way. Anyways, let it be. I had given few more images. One was Nataraja. Okay, here the message that they're giving through religion is leading an ethical life. Yeah. Is that so? How was it? Sorry? Yeah, can you please do that? Right. Anyways, forget that for the time being. That's about this one, Nataraja. Apart from Nataraja, any other famous in Rashtrakuta times, right? There were these uh, sculptural items called as Shalabanjikas, right? Dancing. So what message do we get from that? We get a message that at that point in time, music was given quite a lot of emphasis, right? Music, dance. When you go to Chidambaram temples in Tamil Nadu, you will find a lot many cult sculptural depictions dealing with Bharata Natyam as well. Is it not? So like that. Can you give me some more examples like this? Keep in mind the sculptural items, the unique ones, and then you connect it to social life of those days. Religion, education, music, dance, something like that. Think. Most of the example I've spoken about is from South India. And we need to have equal representation as well. If not equal, equitable representation to North India as well. Can you think of any major North Indian temples during the medieval times? Have you heard of a group of monuments? Right? Kajuraho temples. It's a group of temples belonging which were constructed during the Chandelas rule. Right. Any unique thing about these Kajuraho temples? Right. All of you remember this, right? What does this tell you 
about the social life of those times? Tell me. Very good. Education, right? Adult education was not a taboo at that particular point in time. It was an accepted aspect of education and medieval temple architectures, the sculptors paid attention to it. Right? Can you think of any other temples, sculptures which have become quite famous? Anyone of you who has been to Madurai Meenakshi temple? Yes? What have you done in Madurai Meenakshi temple apart from having the prasadam over there? Madurai Meenakshi temple. There is this one beautiful depiction which is called as Kalyana Sundareshwara. Alright? Shiva and Parvati are getting married in the presence of Vishnu. And when you look at these depictions, right, here the clothes that they are wearing, the ornaments that they are wearing are very ornate, very rich. Just a few hundreds of years ago, during the Chola's time when you visit Brihadeshwara temple, either in Gangai Konda Cholapuram or in Tanjore, the nature of the clothing, there is a difference. During the Chola times, the clothing was quite simple in nature. The decoration was also quite simple in nature. There is one uh, sculptural depiction at Brihadeshwara temple at Gangai Konda Cholapuram, where Rajendra Chola is being coronated by Shiva and Parvati. And Rajendra Chola is wearing just a lower garment and few necklaces. That's about it. And a crown. That's it. Nothing more than that. But in Kalyana Sundareshwara, every inch of the body, you will find jewellery. Right? You will find clothes which too many drapes around it. Richness, social life of those times being depicted. We have taken examples from north as well as south. What is the next question which was part of your art and culture? Do you remember? Contribution of Guptas and Chola empires. Right. Very good. Now when we talk about Gupta and Chola empires, you need to give an introduction for this. Both of them are very important from our Indian artistic perspective. You know that, right? Yes? Yes or no? How many of you gave mains this time around? Anyone? No one. How many of you are planning to give mains next time? Everyone. I do hope that it comes true. You have to give an introduction. Guptas and Cholas, their artistic contributions. In the moment, what comes to your mind? How will you start? How will you go ahead? Tell me, my friend. What introduction will you give? Discuss the artistic contributions of Gupta and Chola to India's culture and heritage. I think that's the question. Tell me, what's the introduction you will give? No. Right? Uh huh. Okay. And that's about it. What about Cholas? You entirely forgot about the Cholas. Anyone else? Yes. Madam, you go ahead. It's a discussion. You need to be discussing with me. Yes. Online students. Yes, you can always pitch in. What introduction will you give? He spoke about golden age. Right. Timeline. Yes. Good. Guptas, they started around 4th century BC, continued until mid 6th century BC. Cholas, around 9th till 13th. Yes. Good. Apart from that, the timeline is very standard approach. You need to move ahead than that because most of your competitors are doing just the same thing. Both Guptas and Cholas were very strong empires, right? They had a very huge geographical expanse as well, right? There are certain underlying conditions. Just a second. There are certain underlying conditions which enabled the Guptas as well as the Cholas to contribute extensively to India's growth in artistic and heritage growth. You guys agree with me? What are those conditions? That is what I want. They had a flourishing trade. Is it not? Apart from that, they had an administrative mechanism, right, 
where it was done in a structured manner. Administration is always important if you want to establish a very big empire for a longer period of time, is it not? Focus on these underlying conditions which enabled Guptas and Cholas to give so much of emphasis on India's artistic. And they also had rulers who provided extensive patronage, right, to the crafts people. Can you think of any rulers as such? In the Cholas, you have your Raja Raja Chola, Rajendra Chola. When we talk about Guptas, yes, right? So if you highlight these three important conditions which enabled both the Guptas and Cholas to extensively contribute to India's artistic growth, that much is enough. Most of your competitors will go with the timeline approach and the people who are evaluating your answers will also be tired reading the same introduction again and again, again and again. So avoid that. Along with this, you just draw a map and give the presence of where Guptas were there, where Cholas were there and in the bracket you mention the time period there. That is more than enough. Right. Coming back. Discuss the major contributions that Guptas and Cholas made. Let me first talk about music. Right. When we talk about music, the Cholas, they emphasized on a particular type of music called as Carnatic music. And just to hold over here, the last question that we discussed, in the Chola temples you told me it was Shiva, who was the major deity who was worshipped, right? Have you heard of Saiva saints such as Appar, Sambadar? Have you heard of their names? Yes. In some of the Chola temples you find cultural depictions of this famous Saiva saints as well. So it shows Shaivism was a major ideology during those times. Right. Moving on. Music. During the Chola time, it was Carnatic music. When I talk about dance, what was the contributions made by the Cholas? They gave emphasis to one classical dance extensively. What was it? Bharatanatyam. Very good. Moving on. Architecture. Guptas gave emphasis to what kind of architecture? Nagara. Right. And when we talk about Cholas, they gave emphasis to Dravidian. Some of the temples built in the Nagara style during the Gupta's time. Can you think of it? Dashavatara temple, very good, right? Right. Apart from that, they gave emphasis to cave architecture as well. Udaygiri hills, right? Udaygiri caves. You remember? That is one more thing that you can talk about. So, you have music, you have dance, you have architecture, you can talk about sculptures as well. Right? You remember which style of sculptural was given emphasis during the Gupta's time? In the post Mauryan period, what were the three important ones that you read about? The sculptural styles Gandhara, Mathura, Amaravati. In Gupta's time, there was one more style which came up. What was that? Sorry? Saranath. Very good. Right? Saranath style. Give me some more headings like this. You have music, you have dance, architecture, sculpture. Can I talk about science as well? Here they are asking about heritage. Scientific heritage. Right? Can you think of any major scientific achievements made during the Gupta's time. Can you think of anything like that? Aryabhata in mathematics, right? In astronomy, we made a lot, many growth over here. That is one more thing that you can talk about. Literature, that's one more subheading for you. In literature, when we talk about the Gupta's time, who was the famous artist that comes to your mind? Kalidasa, right? Sanskrit was given emphasis. During the Chola's time, what was the major language that they gave emphasis to? Tamil. This is for a 10 markers. Is it not? 10 or 15? 
10 markers. So when you are talking about all these dimensions and you are giving examples to each and every one of them, is this enough? Let's talk about one more thing, just for fun. You have paintings. You find mural paintings done on the walls of Udaygiri caves, right? Along with that, when you go to the Chola temples, great Brihadeshwara temple at Tanjo or Brihadeshwara temple at Gangai Konda Chola Puram or even Airavateshwara temple at Darusaram, all collectively called as great leaving Chola temples, you find mural paintings on all of these temples, right? That's one more thing that you can talk about. Discuss the major contributions. Cholas were also a maritime power, right? Maritime heritage, can I include that point over here? Yes, that's one more thing that you can talk about. Maritime heritage. Whatever important keywords are there in that question, you should be able to justify those keywords by giving arguments and examples for each and every one of them. All right? Just writing arguments as such without justifying will not fetch you that many marks. The third question, what was the third question? It was the motives of lion and bull used in Indian mythology, Indian architecture and art as well, is it not? Now when we talk about this question, wh why was this question asked? The parliamentary building controversy, right? There was this one lion which was very ferocious, aggressive for some reason, <laughs> right? When we talk about these animals, lion and bull will come from the mythology. Is there any importance for lion in Indian mythology? Yes, how so? Sorry? Yes, mythology, Hindu mythology, lion. Yes, vehicle of Durga, yes, fine. Apart from that, is there any avatar of Vishnu? Ugra Narasimha, right? And when I say Ugra Narasimha, what image comes to your mind? The aggressive uh, Narasimha, seated in Padmasana, right? In, during the times of Vijayanagara, right? Indian mythology and architecture. Here you have one point. Apart from that, lion. What is Panchatantra? Panchatantra is a collection of stories intended to increase morality in you. And lion happens to be one of the recurrent symbols. You guys agree with me? Right. Now when I talk about lion, what value does lion stand for? Pride, courage, power, confidence, all these four symbols, the four Ashokan lions represent, is it not? Now coming to the bull aspect of it, bull, it is a vehicle of Shiva, right? You have many examples, Nandi, almost every Shiva temple will have that. The famous Nandi is where? The largest monolithic Nandi, Chamundivatta is it? Le Pakshi temple in Andhra Pradesh. Now, whenever you are thinking about Indian art, I just gave you some examples which were in your mind that comes to you like that. But from a chronological perspective, you have to have the capability of exploring. So when I talk about bull, right, go for the earliest specimen of artistic evidence we have. What is the earliest specimen of arts we have in our country? Beam bed cup paintings, very good. And in this beam bed cup paintings, do we find depictions of bull? Yes, is it not? So you can use that. And when they represented bull over there, they showcased how they used to hunt it, how it was something which was integral, a part of their life. After moving from beam bed cup, what is the next chronology, major aspect of Indian art you will read? In this valley civilization, you remember humpless bull? Yes, right. Now, dimag mein bulb chala. Is it not? Apart from that, do you remember this proto-Shiva seal? Do you see bull over there? 
any aspects of bull you see in that seal the one who is standing in front of shiva is buffalo the kirita the crown that shiva is wearing is the horns of a bull do you remember there were uh, certain toys which were made during the indus valley civilization they depicted a form of bull called as zebu bull you have evidences of that as well right apart from that mauryan times in the mauryan times do you see any depictions of bull do you see any depictions of bull during the mauryan times rampurva bull right here Ra the bull which was constructed during the ashokan times it represented the strength of that particular empire so you have depictions of that lion is something which is represented in most of indian temples as sculptures right in front of rathas you will have that is it not when i talk about this jataka stories what is jataka stories it is related to which, uh, which religion buddhism very good and even in buddhism in jataka stories you have the representation of lion over there is it not give me one few more examples of bull and lion being used in indian art mythology or architecture rishabh dev right in jainism yes please elaborate go ahead i want you to elaborate i'm not going to leave you at that kashish come on rishabh dev yes uh huh yes and all, how many of you watch astrology or believe in astrology please raise your hands i know all of you believe in that is it not every morning at 8 am you will switch on your public tv or some other tv and watch astrology in our astrology there are so many signs is it not what is that one sign where you have bull representation taurus vrushaba right very good and in indian mythology there is this belief that when kali yuga ends there will be a herd of bulls right who will trample on all the evil people as well that is one more thing that you can talk about in terms of mythology now huli vesha huli dance all of you know this where is it practiced chandra levati is it in coastal regions in mangalore in kasaragod district right now there are certain areas in our country in the northeastern part in and also in karnataka where there is something called as lion dance as well okay that you can talk about it right yes apart from this anything you can think about in paintings do you find lions and bulls lions and bulls in paintings the depictions bharat mata portrayal ma durga we are going for that is it go for something much more simpler in nature that you might have come across in temples okay and when we are talk about when we talk about paintings apart from religious themes anything else bull and lion are one of the most recurrent things there is one more animal which finds its use to a very extensive degree all right in indian mythology as such can you name me which animal that is sorry elephants right elephants are something which you are seeing since the bhimbetka times have you heard of kailasna temple at ellora right kailasna temple at ellora has been built in such a way that they it seems as if the elephants are lifting the temple on their back right elephants are a symbol which you find in some of the monuments which were built by akbar as well in the red fort that he built right how many of, uh, for how many people have i handled art and culture right was there a question where i asked about elephants why elephants were a recurrent symbols right so you are able to relate right when you look at art and culture and not from a very factual perspective but the significance of it what is the beauty of art and culture why it is so important for us to know about it you don't have to 
read too much, be it from a prelims or a mains perspective. All these three questions were damn easy, to be honest with you. All right? In the last few years, they were asking questions directly on Buddhism, Jainism, Bhakti and Sufi movement. Over here, there was no such kind of thing. You guys agree with me? All you had to do is present arguments, give some examples, and that's about it. You figure out the structure. Is it not? Yes. How many of you have uh, attempted writing answers for all these three questions? GS1? Yes. My friend, any other points that you want to add? Jalikatu, yes. Very good. It's part of the Tamil heritage. Yes. Sorry? Kambala. Jalikatu and Kambala are like brothers. The moment one says, the other one adds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, when we talk about sculpture, they had the bronze depictions. The heights of lost wax technique was realized there. Very good. Not just that. When we talk about the Tirupati temples, na, there are depictions of Krishna Devaraya and his two queens. Right? Yes. Anything else? Those were not Chola's time, but yes. Anyways, apart from that. Four lions. Those four lions represent what? Pride, power, courage and confidence. That is what I told you in the beginning. Right. Anything else? No? Any doubts you have regarding art and culture? You can ask me now. Any doubts? No doubts. So how will you make notes on art and culture? This is the most recurrent question that is asked to me. How should we go about making notes for art and culture? How should we read about it? So you give me the answer. I've asked you a question myself. How will you go about it? No answer, is it? She's, she's reiterating what I've told them. It's quite simple. What I want you to do in terms of art and culture is pick out this major ages, right? You have your prehistoric age, you have Indus Valley civilization, you have Maurya and Guptas. Now, if you pick an age, ask yourself, what is the major artistic contribution of that age? In Guptas, it was almost everything. When we talk about Mauryas, it was cave architecture, right? Was there any sculpture over there? Do you remember Didarganj Yakshi? Yes, this yellow color, very polished, right? So there is an age, there are certain artistic contributions. Architecture was a major thing in Guptas. So age, artistic contributions, how they enriched with examples. If you do this, both from a prelims perspective and a mains perspective, it's going to be very easy. Right? In these three questions, did you find any complexity of an extraordinary level that you usually find in your prelims? In prelims, they give you all sorts of text, literary text, and they ask you whether it is Jainism or Buddhism. Very difficult even for Jains or Buddhists to answer that. In these three questions, did you have such complexity? No, right? So, two 10 markers, 20 and 115, 35 marks. Two 15 markers. So, what? 30, 40. Easily you could have scored quite a lot. If you knew how to read and if you have practiced well. I was just watching the last few minutes of what uh, Nikhil sir was saying. And one thing what Nikhil sir told was, go through the previous year question papers. If you observe previous year question papers of any year on any subject, the themes remain the same. It is just the wordings that change. Is it not? Right? So if they ask about Guptas, what all they might ask? Tell me. Architecture they might ask. Sculptures they've asked. Okay? Apart from that, literature they will be asking. Right? How Buddhism was encouraged during the Gupta's time, that might be also a question. You remember there is this one stupa called as Dhamik stupa, right? That was built during their time. Sarnath sculptural style was started by them. Cave architecture, you have to prepare notes in such manner, okay? If you do that, any question that they might ask, even if the complexity level is on the higher side, you will be able to answer it, yes. Any other questions? Nothing? 
Pakka. So how many of you are planning to write mains next time then? Right. Go back home, write answers for these three questions and also answers for the last art and culture questions from 2013 and you can meet me and get them evaluated when you are free and also when I am free. Okay. So that's the thing. Any other questions? No? Right. Thank you then.